Hi, I'm Tanya. Welcome to Virtual Reef Diver, a citizen science project to help map and monitor Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Even if you've never been snorkeling or never seen a coral before with your own eyes, we hope this video will help you be able to tell the difference between a hard coral and a soft coral, algae, and our easier categories of sand, water, and other. Let's get started with those easier categories. First off, there are so many organisms that make their home on the reef floor. If you ever can't tell what something is, for any reason, just choose unsure. Even professional marine biologists will have to use this classification sometimes. We have also included an other category. This is different from the category of unsure. If you can clearly see what's under a classification circle, and you know that it's not a hard coral or soft coral, it's not an algae, and it's not sand or water, then it would fall into the category of other. Some of the things you might find in this category are sponges, crinoids, sea stars, and many, many more. The water category is for when you see photos taken at an angle like this. You shouldn't need to use the water category very often because we try to only include photos that point directly at the seafloor. Coral reefs are often flanked by large deposits of desert-like sand. Here are some examples of sand. It may look barren, but an extraordinary variety of plants and animals call this habitat home. Knowing sand is present is important to us because the life that occupies this ecosystem is a major food source for a variety of fish and other coral reef creatures. Please note that sand is different from a rocky bottom, like this or this. Actually, almost all rocks are covered by a thin layer of algae, so please count rocks as algae. More on that later. Let's move on to the next set of categories, which is our living organism categories. They might be a bit more difficult to tell apart from each other, but they can also be very beautiful and interesting. Let's start with hard corals. Here are some common forms of the hard corals you may see. Known as the taxonomic subclass Hexacorelia, these are the corals that build a reef by pulling calcium carbonate out of the water to build their bony skeletons. These stony structures form the houses for polyps. Imagine miniature sea anemones that are the actual coral animals. Hard coral colonies come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. What they have in common is that, if you are close enough, you can see small holes in their bony skeleton where the polyps live. The holes will all be the same size and pretty evenly spaced. Here are some common forms of the hard corals you may see. Sometimes it can be easy to confuse hard corals with sponges. The difference is that the holes and sponges are not all the same size and shape and they are irregularly spaced. Here are some pictures comparing hard corals and sponges. Notice this encrusting sponge that grows flat over rock or dead coral. It is relatively common. Don't be fooled into thinking that it's a hard coral. Soft corals are described as undersea wildflowers because of their bright colors and their resemblance to plants, often forming fields on the seabed and outer reef slopes. They can come in vibrant shades of yellow, pink, red, purple, and orange. Like their name suggests, they have soft, tissue-like bodies which are flexible, either soft and squishy or firm and leathery. Contrary to hard corals, soft corals are non-reef builders. Here are several examples of common soft corals. Our final organism category is algae, and these are very diverse as well. They come in many colors, but are usually in red, green, and brown. As we mentioned before, if you can see the shape of a rock on the reef, it is probably actually covered by a thin layer of algae, either crustos coralline algae or turf algae. Turf algae is called that because it grows in a fuzzy layer over the rock, like astroturf. Crustos coralline algae is the most common type of red algae on the Great Barrier Reef, and it is also the trickiest one to identify at first. It resembles a pink bubble gum squished onto the surface of the rock. It can look like hard coral, but it lies flatter on the surface, and it does not have little holes on it because it doesn't have any polyps like either hard coral or soft coral would. Green algae comes in the most diverse range of shapes and sizes. Brown algae can form small crusts or pads growing on rock and dead coral. 
but it can also come in larger bushy and tree-like forms with stems and leaves. Okay, that was a lot to cover. Now let's go through some example images from the Virtual Reef Diver website and classify them together. Here I am on the classification webpage of Virtual Reef Diver. Over on the right hand side, I can see my classification categories. I'm going to get started with what I know. Straight away, there are several points I can identify as being hard coral. I can also see some soft coral in the image. Looks like there's some algae as well. I might need to zoom in to get a better look at some things. I can't quite see what's under these points. Even when I zoom in, it looks a bit ambiguous. I'll just mark those as unsure. This one's tricky. There's some flat hard coral under there that most of the circle is covering. A little finger of soft coral gets into the circle, but mostly this is hard coral. When I zoom in, a couple more points become clear to me. I think these are hard corals. All right, I seem to be missing one more point, and there it is, another hard coral. Now I can submit this image and move on to the next one. This image is a bit easier. I can see one large hard coral colony, so I'm going to choose all of those. There's a couple points down there in the distance that I can't see very well, so I'm going to mark them as unsure. And some parts of this hard coral colony have died off, turning into rock and being covered by turf algae. Well, I hope this video has helped you understand Virtual Reef Divers classification categories. And now you can log in and start to help us map and monitor the Great Barrier Reef. Remember, this job can be difficult even for professional marine scientists. So just do your best and I really hope you enjoy exploring our images of the marine environment. Thank you for your help.